turn it over to Robert Yavez, our principal planner, who is our project manager. Robert. Robert, you're muted. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start. Um, I, Robert may be having technical difficulties. Um, <clears throat> hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Marilyn Derosa. I am the uh, Engineering and Transportation Director for the City of Tempe. Uh, and um, I noticed, I, I have the ability to see who the attendees are here. Um, and we have some staff, but we also have some folks uh, that I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with, although Shannon or the rest of the team certainly may be familiar. Yeah, it would be great if those of you that, that aren't City of Tempe staff uh, would use the chat to just let us know uh, what organization you represent. Uh, and then we can try to customize our presentation based on what it is that that is of interest to you. Um, it's a relatively small group. There's about 11 folks in attendance, and I think about four or five of them are City of Tempe staff. So that'd be great if you guys will help us out uh, to, so we could customize our presentation. Um, like I said, I'm Marilyn DeRosa. Um, I, uh, I'm going to assume, well, I, I'm not going to assume that everybody knows uh, is, a, is a transportation professional. Um, there's, uh, I know a lot of you are, um, but the city of Tempe is, uh, 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 is a, a small, a relatively small community within the region, uh, but I would say that we're a mighty community. Um, we have, we're the most uh, urbanized, uh, we're the densest with respect to population uh, and with respect to commercial development, I think with respect to commercial development. Uh, and um, we really have our, our long term planning uh, sets us up to continue to densify uh, and to continue to grow as a uh, as an important urban part of the region. And uh, I think that this uh, this this effort that was launched by Robert Yabez and the rest of the transportation team here at the city of Tempe is uh, is super important to addressing mobility uh, in our region. Um, we have Shannon Skatari here, who's working on our consultant team. You'll hear from Jim Townsend, who's with Wilson and Company, uh, and from Sasha Yolanovich, uh, who is, uh, we'll talk about uh, the Mike Sia Mobility Hub. Um, it's a, I think it's a strong team, and uh, we are, uh, we would like to hear from you as the uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, your ideas uh, and your suggestions um, with respect to how we move forward with the micromobility elements um, of this story. TDM, you all know what TDM is, it's uh, transportation demand management, the ideas of getting people out of their out of their single occupancy vehicles. Uh, single occupancy vehicles aren't the demons, they are simply uh, they are simply one. Of several methods for mobility, uh, and they're they're useful, uh, and and there are times when they're a perfectly appropriate mode of transportation, but there are other times when there are other options available. Um, and uh, so, one of the ideas with transportation demand management is to share with our community the ways in which it's possible to move about the urbanized area. Uh, transportation. TMA, the Transportation uh, Management Association, uh, is an idea that has been really flourished across the country. Um, many urbanized areas are creating these associations, uh, and it, they're associations of the folks that use the transportation infrastructure. Uh, and together, those folks, the businesses, the, the, the cities, the citizens, share best practices uh, for how to make transportation more efficient uh, and more, uh, uh, not just more efficient, but easier, the ease of use. Uh, and then uh, once we've talked about, Jim will talk about those two things, um, then Sasha will share this idea of mobility hubs and how we're going about identifying where mobility hubs might exist in our community and 
what kind of uh, features and resources might be available at those hubs. So um, I will, uh, the council, as you probably know, they have a number of priorities. They have some performance measures. And this is a multidisciplinary effort that includes several departments within the city and stakeholders outside of, the, of our organization. Uh, and uh, our goal, a couple of the goals we have here is to achieve a 20-minute city. That's one of Robert's uh, audacious goals. Uh, our, our travel time index, which is to address congestion, uh, Kathy Hollow is uh, responsible for working to see that goal achieved. Uh, and then sustainable growth and development, uh, all of this ties into our climate action plan and uh, reductions of greenhouse gases. Um, so um, I think we could skip this slide about sustainable Tempe. Uh, and now I believe one of my colleagues is going to talk about the plans uh, and the mobility hubs are going to start the presentation. So uh, thank you all for coming. If you have any questions, let us know. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, Robert, next slide, please. I think we went over the agenda pretty specifically. We want to make sure that we move this along so that we can get the questions. Hi, my name is Shannon Scutari, and I'm with Scutari and Company. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the things that is really exciting is that Tempe has the infrastructure in place to truly be uh, the, the hub of activity on a lot of the conversation about how to better utilize infrastructure, public transportation, rail, bus, walking, biking. The public-private partnerships are already in place, the engagement with the employers um, and the residents um, about making sure that those connections are made um, throughout the region and not just in the city of Tempe. Tempe has been incredibly progressive in, in investing in the multimodal infrastructure. And unless we can really help to make that infrastructure, not only as Marilyn saying more efficient, but um, actually the choice for people and much more convenient than them getting in and out of their car for every single one of the trips that they take throughout Tempe and connecting to the rest of the region, then we really can't utilize that investment to the, um, to the best of its ability. So it's very exciting that we're really, once again, Tempe is leading the way for the region on a lot of this conversation on transportation demand management. And so today you're gonna hear some technical pieces to this. This is really the beginning. Um, there's a lot of information that we'll be sharing today but we want to hear from you because we're also studying, as Marilyn mentioned, best practices from throughout the country and making sure that we work with Tempe so that we can create that plan, that transportation demand management plan, the right locations for mobility hubs, and really looking at this as a long-term strategy for how to make sure that the investment that Tempe has made is utilized by individuals that live and work within Tempe as well as those that connect to Tempe for employment. Now I'm going to hand it over to Jim Townsend and he's gonna give you some specific information about transportation demand management. Thank you, Shannon. Robert, let's go to the next slide. So transportation demand management is, is, as the others have started talking through is really trying to make and allow the transportation system to be more efficient and effective in moving people. Um, and it's really honed in on, on targeted policies, folks, on balancing that the, the land uses that this transportation system is supporting. And so the result of that is reducing the overall travel demand, making the system work for you. Um, it, it creates those opportunities for travel choices, such as riding a bike, walking, taking transit, uh, car share, scooters, all those, all those different types of modes come into play when you start talking about transportation demand management. And in the end, what you, you end up with is a healthier community, safer community in terms of mobility safety, uh, it improves air quality. So it, and, um, you know, accomplishing a lot of the, the city's goals 
and it it also promotes the the economic healthy economic conditions and and uh, a lot of employers uh, it helps employers with recruitment and retention uh, having those choices for their employees to get around. Yeah, next slide, Robert. You know, from a, a I'll say foundational start on transportation demand management on the infrastructure side, public transportation is a key component. Having the transit available to, to help people get around is, is really fundamental. The next slide. The, you know, as we start looking at different other modes, you know, beyond the bike lanes, it's also the supporting facilities such as parking and uh, repair facilities, lockers, showers, and so on. So that the individuals that do take their bikes have the ability to, to keep their bikes safe, maintained, so on if they have issues. And um, of course, the, the showers are a big part of being able to be viable. Uh, next slide. On the micro mobility side of things, it's having allocated space for those elements for bike share or scooters and so on so that you know everything takes up space within that right away and you know allocating uh space for for parking those types of uh, modes really can help make it a successful uh, inclusion as part of your options that, that are offered in the community next slide and you know, for those that that decide not to drive in, having a car available to them through car share programs is also very, um, very important because there are things that come up. And you know, it, for a for a community to help evolve the thinking of shifting to other modes. This provides, in some cases, a safety net for those that are on the edge of making the decision. This might help them make the decision. Next slide. And so, you know, having convenient uh, pickup and drop off areas are also essential. Uh, Uber and Lyft are very important elements to, to the community now. It wasn't the case a few years ago, but now they're they're an essential component and and individuals do use Uber and Lyft as a primary way to get around. Next slide. And you know the other piece of transportation demand management is having the information available at, at your fingertips. And so trip planning information, the infrastructure to provide comfortable waiting areas is an important. Having kiosks, having uh, mobile services, and so on, so that the there it takes away transportation demand management strategies helps to remove the the trade offs. It creates the ability for people to to make these decisions a little more comfortably to ride their bike, walk, and so on. The other uh, aspect of transportation demand management is on the program side, where there's incentives of transit passes, parking cash out, having a guaranteed ride home, and also the policies on the land use side of things and, and enforcement. And you know, a lot of what we're seeing now is uh, with COVID, it was uh, working from home. So you'll see a lot of employers implementing the teleworking or compressed work week flex schedule as they start returning to the office and have these hybrid schedules or in some cases uh, fully working from home. Next slide. Now contextually, you know, you can you can implement strategies at the regional level, at the city level, at the neighborhood level, a downtown district, a corridor, at a specific employment site in a, a multifamily residential site. So, you know, there are there are very varying scales of transportation demand management and and tools to help people at whatever scale you're looking at. That's a lot of what Sasha's gonna talk about later. 
the uh, impact that transportation demand management strategies have. They could be on the low end of one to two percent, or it could be in the high end of you know 10, 15, 20 percent uh, travel reduction. And a lot of that is focused on the, the the success of that is focused on information sharing. When people are better informed and they have the the choices made to them that are available to them, you can have a significant impact on the amount of travel that's on the roadways. Next slide. So what is transportation demand management all about? It's shifting priority away from driving the people driving alone to work to to the to various events, to, uh, I'm sorry, light turned off, but, uh, to the store, to a friend's house, whatever, having, having options available so that the individuals can make a choice and uh, if they don't have to drive alone. And it's a huge element of that is collaborating between the residents and the employers with the, with the city. And, and with those agencies so that the programs that are, are moved forward and invested in are really meaningful to those that, that want to use it. Um, and, and that education piece about what options are available, that's really critical so that people understand what options are out there for them. Next slide. So now we're gonna get into the Transportation Management Association side of things. Next slide. So that provides, the TMA provides that institutional framework to support transportation demand management strategies. And the TMA is a strategy in itself. And it's, it's a, typically a staffed organization that helps promote, provide and promote these public-private partnerships and working together to, to develop and further the strategies of, of creating these options for people to get around and move about. Uh, TMA is also a voice, a very strong voice, especially when there's a large um, uh, participation with the TMA. And so you know, in, in a region like, like Phoenix and Tempe, you know, a, a TMA, can, can really help shape policy in that region, uh, especially with future investments. Next slide. So this slide was on a, a snip from the Boston TMA. And as you can see on their webpage, a lot of it is about information sharing. And it's, it's what infrastructure is out there, what are those publications that might be useful to an organization uh, what events out there, uh, talks about land use, talks about transportation, environment. So there's the, it's a lot of the TMA is at your fingertip information that's relevant to the, the local area and its participants. Next slide. The TMA is made up of, it has a board as an executive committee. Um, you know, in this case, you can see there's a lot of board members. So, you know, there's that investment that's being made in the region is also being directed at the region. Next slide. Uh, this is an example of a brochure or a, a pamphlet that they they developed at, at the Boston TMA that is just information sharing out and what programs that they were offering at the time that people could get involved with uh, different activities and so on. So it's, again, it, those who engage, those who participate are those that become more informed. And typically you have a individual or a set of individuals at an employer site that's um, part of the TMA, that's, a, that's part of that membership, and they help carry the messages back to, to the TMA or to the uh, employer site uh, employees. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Sasha and he's gonna talk about the mobility hubs. Thank you. 
I'm Sasha Ivanovich. I'm with CR Associates, the consultant um, working with Tempe on the Mobility Hubs project. Next slide, please. Uh, mobility hubs are, are one transportation demand stra management strategy the city is looking towards uh, as it plans to meet its anticipated growth. Now, these are places which combine the resources of multiple modes of transportation together into one area and designed to help reduce the need for vehicle ownership and single occupancy driving trips. Next slide, please. Uh, mobility hubs accomplish this by improving the comfort and ease of using non-driving modes of transportation, uh, addressing first mile, last mile access problems with getting to regional or high quality public transportation. Uh, and they also provide access to amenities that would otherwise be fulfilled by vehicle ownership. Uh, this graphic here shows an example of, of what you could find at a mobility hub. Uh, many of these are physical examples of TDM that Jim um, presented on earlier. Uh, this uh, hypothetical example here, this abstract example, uh, it, on a continuum, this would kind of be a mobility hub that has everything. In reality, they're, they vary quite a bit in, in the size and selection of amenities. Um, but anyways, here you see, um, uh, Public transportation together with shared uh, fleets of different types of vehicles, uh, car share, neighborhood electric vehicles, bike scooters, and so on. Uh, next slide. Uh, so the um, built environment in which uh, mobility hubs are sited uh, play a pretty big role in their utility. Uh, mobility hubs maximize their potential when they're in areas which are already well suited for not driving. Uh, these would be parts of the city that have good public transportation access uh, where abundant destinations are within walking and cycling distance uh, and where driving and vehicle ownership are cumbersome due to uh, parking difficulties, parking costs, uh, traffic congestion. Uh, this project has identified five settings uh, in the city where the city wants to target uh, where to site mobility hubs. Uh, next slide. So the following slides will will go over each of these setting types. The first one, um, major destination areas. These would be places where, uh, like like downtown Tempe or like ASU. Um, or some of the major employment uh, hub areas in the city where uh, getting around by car might be difficult due to traffic or parking. Um, and uh, so anyways, yeah, this setting type uh, uh, represents uh, uh, those types of environments in the city. Next slide. Um, uh, the second uh, context site uh, we're looking at are neighborhood park locations. Uh, once you get outside of your your downtown uh, ASU parts of the city, uh, the prevailing characteristics of the urban environment change, and it, it it's more primarily single family residential, and and um, many of these uh, parts of the city. Uh, where um, where where it is residential, the park is kind of this the this central uh, focus area of of many of the residential neighborhoods, and and so this uh, setting uh, represents um, a a location type that could serve uh, lower density parts of the city. Uh, next slide. Uh, the third setting type would be park and rides. These are already locations being used to help uh, get people onto public transportation. Um, many of, of the city's park and rides are also adjacent to major destinations. Uh, but uh, one reason uh, why we do want to also, um, or why we did want to focus on this, is because typically there's a lot of space to work with in park and rides because they are parking lots and and. Many park the city's park and ride locations already have arrangements with the city, and so it's it's a good opportunity area. Next slide. Uh, curbside locations are another 
another environment that we want to uh, strategize for mobility hubs, and that's because um, uh, there are many uh, major destinations or, or very constrained areas where the only space to work with is in the curb. And um, a very prominent example of that within Tempe and, and in greater metropolitan Phoenix would be the light rail stations, many of which are within uh, the medians of major roads. And um, uh, these are areas we want to serve, but the environment is very constrained. Uh, next slide. Uh, and then finally, private developments. Uh, on site, this would be uh, on site uh, mobility hubs to serve uh, residential complexes and, and large office buildings. Uh, and in this site, uh, this would be about getting many of those physical TDM examples that, that Jim was sharing and, and getting that into um, sort of a unified um, place within these private developments. Next slide. Um, and with that, I'll uh, pass it back uh, to one of our other speakers, Shannon. Thank you, Sasha. So clearly uh, for everybody that's here, um, you're participating in the public meeting. This is very important part of um, hearing your thoughts and questions as we move forward. Once again, we're in their very uh, initial stage of this work. Um, there's a lot of technical information, a lot of data gathering, and a lot of study of other best practices and working with employers as well to outline employer and employee plans um, for travel reduction or transportation demand management strategies. Um, this is about culture change. This is about behavior change. And as we're discussing, this is really a long-term uh, prospect and it's something that we're just at the very beginning of. Um, but we would love it if you would answer the survey. Um, we have information on this slide. If you go to the project website, you will actually be able to log on to the survey. Um, that will allow you to give us your specific perspective on your experience, your travel experience, as well as how you recommend we move forward. Um, I think the next slide is also maybe highlighting what I just said, which is great. Um, and then I think at this point, we are going to just open it up for questions um, and we'll be very concise in our answers to keep us to our time. Thank you. Okay, so everyone, if you have any questions, you can put those in the chat, or if you raise your hand, then I can unmute you if you'd like to um, ask your question out loud. While we're waiting for questions, I, I'd like to say that if there's any, uh, for, the, for the folks that are in attendance, if your project or your work is uh, with our planning team, uh, if Tarna has been uh, engaged and is very enthusiastic, if you've been uh, if your work has been with uh, economic development, uh, Jill Bushbacher is a wonderful contact. Uh, uh, so it's, it's not just our team. There's some obviously in our transportation team and our community uh, outreach team. Uh, but it, in our sustainability office, Braden's a great contact. So whatever it is that your particular project uh, or program is that uh, that interfaces with Tempe, there are several folks uh, here that can um, engage with you if you have other questions or, uh, or think of something later. So I am not seeing any questions. Again, this is that opportunity for you to ask them, or as Marilyn had mentioned, you can reach out if you think of something afterwards or either way. So following up on what Marilyn said, one of the really important things is that um, we're looking also uh, with this multidisciplinary team at ways to grow sustainably within the city of Tampa, but also to really, um, as I mentioned, um, set the bar for the type of utilization of a, of a system of a lot of transportation choices throughout the rest of the region. Because uh, the city of Tempe can clearly be an innovator in all of these things. But we're also looking at how that resonates and that reverberates throughout the rest of the region as well. And our regional partners in Mesa and Phoenix have been incredibly supportive of this work as well. 
And also one of the things that we've organized is a technical advisory committee where we have partners from the state. We have partners from other agencies that are working um, Valley Metro, Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, all of these different the Maricopa County trip reduction program. So a lot of this is about collaboration as well. And if there are other partners that you know that we should be incorporating into this collaboration, mm -hmm. um, it's about land use, transportation, connectivity, and sustainability. Thank you. So I'm not so, seeing any questions. Uh, we can go ahead and just hang out for a few minutes if anyone has any, but otherwise um, you're free to go. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.